All right, listeners, you've been asking for it, the ultimate deep dive on owl bears. And that's what we're going to deliver. So buckle up. We're about to unpack everything there is to know about these fascinating creatures. From their, well, you know, strange looks to their mysterious origins. Yeah, owl bears they really embody this uh, clash of the familiar and the strange. It's like nature just decided to blend a bear and an owl together. And uh, the result? Something that both captivates and terrifies. Absolutely. A fantastic blend of terror. But, you know, before we get into the why of their existence, maybe we should start with the basics. What exactly I an owl bear? Okay, so picture this. You're trekking through a dense forest. <laughs> and huh. suddenly, bam, you come face to face with this creature. Don't. Standing a towering eight feet tall. Oh, wow. It's got the powerful build of a bear, right? I'm picturing it. Covered in this thick coat of fur and feathers. Blood feathers. But here's where it gets really interesting. Instead of a bear's head, it has the head of an owl. Massive round eyes that seem to pierce right through you. Oh, this visual is uh, intense. A sharp hooked beak <laughs> and those, you know, deadly talons. Yeah, that's a visual that's going to stick with me for a while. And, you know, there's that one detail I always found kind of creepy. They have like a transparent third eyelid. What's the point of that? Right, right. It's called a nictitating membrane. Pretty common in birds, actually, and some reptiles. See, those dense forests that owl bears love, oh. full of branches, dust, debris, all that stuff. Oh, uh, okay. That third eyelid acts like a shield, basically, protecting their eyes. Yeah. So that they can focus on hunting without, you know, getting a twig in their eye. Okay, makes sense. And speaking of hunting, what about their senses? I mean, we're talking about a mix of bear and owl, so. They inherit the best of both worlds, Bears have an incredible sense of smell oh. and owls. Exceptional night vision. The owl bear. It gets both. Wow. So basically there's no sneaking up on the right. Not a chance. Their sense of smell can track you from like miles away. And their night vision, they can see you even in the darkest forest. Okay, no sneaking up on these guys. And and get this, they also have asymmetrical ears. Asymmetrical ears. Wait, what? Might seem like a minor detail, but it's actually crucial for their hunting. I have to admit I've never even heard of that. It's all about sound localization. Having one ear slightly higher than the other lets them pinpoint the location of sounds with incredible accuracy. Oh, wow. So even if you try to be all stealthy. They'll know exactly where you are. That is both fascinating and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> okay. So we've established that these creatures, they're apex predators, right? Definitely. With incredible senses. But what about their uh, temperament? Here's where things get really, really interesting. Owl bears are notorious for their aggression, just ferocity. They attack almost anything that moves. Really? And I'm not talking just like small prey. These guys take on bears, trolls, even other owl bears. Remember that quote from the ranger, Florin Falcon Hand? Oh, of course. It sent chills down my spine when I first read it. Once the wolves and owl bears catch your scent, they'll follow you. If you can't keep ahead of them, they'll eat you. Yeah. Slowly, if it's an owl bear that catches you, they like cruel sport with their food. It paints a very vivid and uh, rather grim picture. It does. But it's important to remember this aggression, it isn't driven by malice. It's pure instinct. Mm. Owl bears have this insatiable appetite that drives them to hunt constantly. So they're not evil. They're just uh, really hungry. Exactly. A force of nature driven by this like primal need to survive. But, but there is a silver lining to their ferocity. Okay, I'm listening. Because they attack so readily, they can be tricked, lured into traps. That's almost a relief to hear. Mm -hmm. Speaking of food, what exactly is on the owlbear menu? Well, they're primarily carnivorous, and their diet is actually surprisingly diverse. I mean, it includes everything from small animals like rabbits to larger prey like bears and trolls. Mm -hmm. There are even, you know, rumors that they have a particular fondness for elves. Elves? Though that might be more folklore than fact. Okay. Elves on the menu. Yeah. That's a story for another time. But what I find interesting is that despite being mammals, they lay eggs. How does that even work? That's one of the big mysteries surrounding owl bears. Despite being warm-blooded mammals, they lay eggs. Right. It's like their biology is just this patchwork of traits from different creatures. Exactly. And their mating habits are also pretty intriguing. Males produce this uh, potent musk to attract females during mating season. Like nature took a bunch of different animal traits, threw them into a blender, and out popped the owl bear. That's a great way to put it. And it raises so many questions about their origins. I mean, 
where did these creatures come from? Are they the result of some strange natural phenomenon? Or is there something uh, more, you know, magical at play? Now, that's a question I'm eager to explore. Some say they're the result of a magical experiment gone wrong. Right. While others believe they come from another realm entirely. Those are the two leading theories. And hmm. both are pretty fascinating in their own right. The idea of a mage may be a bit too ambitious, you know, accidentally creating these creatures through some uh, arcane experiment. It's a compelling narrative. It is. But then there's the theory that owlbears originate from the Feywild, this magical realm where the laws of nature are, shall we say, a bit more flexible. The Feywild. Yeah. A place where magic and nature intertwine. Yeah. That definitely adds a layer of mystique to the owlbear story. It does. But how did they cross over from this magical realm into our world? Was there a portal? Ah, uh, do they just wander through some mystical forest? Right. Unfortunately, the specifics of their arrival are uh, shrouded in mystery. Oh, okay. But mm. there's one intriguing detail that adds another layer to this theory. I'm all ears. There's speculation that the Airy, these powerful celestial beings, might have played a role in their creation or, or maybe their arrival in our world. The Airy? Okay, now I'm really intrigued. Who are they? And why would they be involved with owlbears? That's a question for another deep dive. The Elories are incredibly powerful and mysterious, known for their mastery of creation and their connection to the forces of nature. Okay. But the exact nature of their involvement with owlbears is uh, something we'll have to explore another time. Right, you win. We'll put a pin in that for now. Okay. But let's get back to our main attraction, the owlbears. We've talked about their appearance, their senses, their behavior, even their mysterious origins. But what about their place in history? Have they played a role in any major events? Absolutely. Owlbears have left their mark on history in some uh, pretty surprising ways. For example, during the Silver Age of Netheril, there was this conflict known as the Caravan War. The Caravan War? That sounds intense. It was. The Netherese, this powerful human empire, they were expanding their trade routes. Okay. And guess who was standing in their way? Uh, I'm going to guess owlbears. You got it. Owlbears. The Netherese, being who they were, decided the best solution was to just eradicate the entire owl bear population in that region. They wiped out an entire population. Talk about overkill. Well, that was the Netherese way. They were known for their uh, ruthless efficiency. They even established this outpost called Old Owl Well, mm -hmm. named in honor of, or perhaps in mockery of, the owl bears they'd exterminated. It's a dark chapter in owl bear history for sure. Yeah. Are there any other notable events where they played? you know, a significant role. Well, there's the story of the last giant owlbear in Cormare. It was hunted down by this group of elves and a human named Ondith Obarskir, who would later become the founder of Cormare, actually. So even in those early days, humans and owlbears were clashing. It seems so. And then there's the tale of King Aralum I of Tether. He was killed in a hunting accident while pursuing an owlbear. Oh, wow. Although there are rumors that his elven companions might have had uh, something to do with his unfortunate demise. Courtly intrigue, Annie and Owlbear. It does sound like the plot of a great historical fantasy novel. It does. And let's not forget Baal, the Lord of Murder. He supposedly created this uh, powerful owlbear named Thorax as part of his uh, twisted plan to terrorize the Moonshay Isles. Wow, so owlbears have even been pawns in the games of gods. It seems like they've been both feared and exploited throughout history. Unfortunately, that's often the case with, you know, powerful creatures. But there's one aspect of their history that I find particularly fascinating, the idea of training these beasts. Training an owlbear, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. Which as you can imagine, is incredibly difficult and dangerous. I can only imagine. They're basically walking tanks with a bad attitude. Yeah. I can't imagine anyone being crazy enough to try that. Oh, you'd be surprised. Throughout history, there have always been those who uh, seek to bend powerful creatures to their will. Right. And while technically they are trainable, taming an owlbear is incredibly difficult and and often cruel. I can only imagine the methods. Most attempts at training involve pain and fear, which, you know, leads to resentment yeah. and potential rebellion from the owlbear. Not exactly a recipe for a successful partnership. So what, they just like beat them into submission? <laughs> it's a brutal reality, but yeah, that's often the method used. Yeah. It's a practice that's uh, widely condemned, but uh, persists nonetheless. However, there are whispers of individuals known as, get this, owlbear whisperers. Owlbear whisperers. That's either the coolest or the most terrifying job title I've ever heard. What do they do? 
these individuals, they seem to have this knack for uh, pacifying owl bears, mm. almost like they can communicate with them on some level. It's said they persuade an owl bear to follow them, act as a companion or a guardian. Wow. But even they rely on keeping the owl bear well fed. So even the whisperers have to bribe them with food. That's both hilarious and unsettling at the same time. But seriously, why would anyone want to train an owl bear? What are they even used for? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. The uses are as varied as they are dangerous. Some yeah. employ them as guardians, you know, placing them in strategic locations to deter intruders. I mean, nothing says keep out quite like a giant owl bear guarding your property. No. Exactly. And while incredibly dangerous, some uh, brave or perhaps foolish souls have even attempted to ride them as mounts. Can you imagine? Charging into battle on the back of an owl bear. I think I'll stick to more conventional modes of transportation, but I can see the appeal for those who uh, crave danger. There's also a trade in owl bear parts, of course. Their eggs and pelts are highly sought after. Makes sense. Fetching a uh, hefty price on the black market. Right. And then there's the owl bear musk. Owl bear musk. What in the world is that used for? This is where it gets really interesting. Owlbear musk is extracted from males during mating season, and it's said to have uh, potent magical properties. Really? It's so potent that a single whiff can supposedly break certain enchantments that affect the mind. Oh, wow. Like uh, those causing confusion or fear. So it's like a magical antidote. Exactly. It's a rare and valuable substance, and those who know its secrets, they guard them closely. Wow. We've covered so much ground already. From their, you know, bizarre appearance and ferocious behavior to their mysterious origins and their place in history, owl bears are truly fascinating creatures. They are. And we've only just scratched the surface. There's still so much more to learn about these uh, enigmatic beasts. Speaking of which, we haven't even touched on the different subspecies of owl bears. Oh, right. Did you know that there are snowy owl bears? Giant owl bears. Even winged owl bears. Hold on, winged owl bears. Are you serious? Oh, I'm completely serious. And that's not all. There are rumors of even stranger variations, like owl bears crossed with rust monsters. Winged owl bears. Rust. Rust monster hybrids. This is blowing my mind. The possibilities are both fascinating and terrifying. We definitely need to do a deep dive into owl bear subspecies. I agree. They're each fascinating in their own right. Yeah. And who knows what other secrets we might uncover. <laughs> all right. Sounds like we've got our next adventure lined up. But first, let's explore the world of owl bear subspecies in more detail. Buckle up, it's going to be a wild ride. Welcome back to our deep dive into the world of owl bears. You know, where we left off, we were about to explore the uh, remarkable diversity within this, this already bizarre species. Yeah, winged owl bears, rust monster hybrids. It's hard to believe these creatures could get any stranger. But they do. So where do we even begin? Let's start by venturing into the realm of the truly colossal. Okay, I'm intrigued. The giant owl bear. Giant owl bear. Okay, yeah, that sounds uh, pretty intimidating. How do they differ from their like quote unquote ordinary counterparts? Well, as the name suggests, they're significantly larger, right. towering over even the you know already imposing standard owl bear. We're talking creatures that could easily reach twelve feet or more in height. Twelve feet. Yeah, and, and it's not just their size. They're also incredibly strong, even more aggressive than your average owlbear. Possess this raw power that's uh, truly awe-inspiring. Some speculate they might be the result of those, you know, magical experiments we talked about earlier. So even bigger, even stronger, and even angrier. Sounds like a nightmare come to life. Where do these uh, giant owlbears typically reside? Asking for a friend who definitely wants to avoid them. Well, thankfully, they're... Uh, Quite rare. Okay, good. And they tend to prefer, you know, more isolated regions. There have been reports of them in the summer home of Cormanthor, the flooded forest in the vast, and even a place called uh, Hawkgarth in the border kingdoms. Okay. But but they are solitary creatures. That's good. Which is probably a good thing, considering their temperament. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> One giant owl bear is more than enough for me. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got the giant owl bear covered. Uh -huh. What about those winged owl bears you mentioned? Ah, yes, the winged owl bear. Now this is where it gets really interesting. This is where the owl bear's uh, avian heritage truly takes flight. Right. Imagine an owl bear, already a formidable predator, but now with the ability to swoop down from the sky, really elevates the fear factor, doesn't it? It uh, it certainly does. I thought we could at least outrun a regular owl bear. But now they can fly. No fair. It definitely adds a whole new dimension to their hunting strategy. They can cover vast distances, scout for prey from above, 
and launch surprise attacks with incredible precision. Yeah. Thankfully, they're even rarer than giant owl bears. Okay, good. But if you ever hear the beat of giant wings followed by that uh, terrifying <laughs> screech, you might want to find some cover. And fast. Yes. Noted. I'll be keeping my eyes on the skies from now on. But you mentioned something even weirder than winged owl bears. Owl bear hybrids. Oh, yes. Tell me more about this. This is where things get truly bizarre. Remember how we talked about the possibility of magical experiments creating owl bears? Yeah. Well, there are rumors of even more unnatural combinations out there. One that really stands out is the russet owl monster. Russet owl monster. Okay, what's that? A terrifying fusion of an owl bear and a rust monster. A rust monster. Isn't that the creature that devours metal? The one and only. What would an owlbear rust monster hybrid even look like? It's as horrifying as you might imagine. It's said to have the body of an owlbear, but with metallic plating and those distinctive antenna of a rust monster. Okay. And instead of just claws and a beak, it has these mandibles that can, you know, crush through metal with ease. Okay, that's a hard pass for me. I'll take a regular owlbear over a metal-eating one any day. <laughs> so how did this uh, thing even come about? Well, the tale goes back to this mage named Nestor Podgen, a rather, shall we say, eccentric individual, obsessed with creating new and terrifying creatures. That sounds like a real charmer. Yeah. What could he have possibly been thinking? Who knows? Maybe he thought a rust-eating owlbear would make a, a great guardian for his treasure hoard, or maybe he just liked to tinker with the forces of life and see what... Uh, abominations he could create. I shudder to think. Yeah. Okay, so we've got giant owl bears, winged owl bears, and now this uh, rust-eating monstrosity. What other owl bear variations are lurking out there? Well, you know, it's not always about uh, physical differences. There are also variations based on you know their environment and behavior. For example. The snowy owl bear, okay, a subspecies adapted to the uh, harsh, icy landscapes of the polar region. Oh, right, like the uh, polar bears of the owl bear world. Exactly, they have thick white fur, you know, blend in with the snow and ice. Yeah, and they're just as ferocious as their southern counterparts. So no escaping them, even in the frozen wastelands. Are there any other? Uh, environmentally adapted owl bears. There are whispers of shadow owl bears found in the plane of shadow, a realm of darkness and echoes. They're said to be even more stealthy and elusive than their uh, counterparts in the material world. And then there are the earth half elemental owl bears. Okay, what creatures infused with the power of the earth itself? Okay, now that's just showing off. Earth powers an owl bear it hardly seems fair. It does seem like nature, or perhaps some uh, mischievous magical force, decided to give these creatures every advantage imaginable. Seriously? Yeah. But even with all these variations, there's one thing that seems to unite them all: their, you know, sheer aggression and insatiable hunger. That's true. No matter the size, wings, or elemental powers, all owl bears seem to share that primal drive to uh, hunt and devour. It's what makes them such formidable and uh, fascinating creatures. It really does. It makes you wonder, though, you know, if owl bears are so varied, yeah. is there a common thread that links them all? Is there something that defines what it truly means to be an owl bear? That's a great question. Yeah. And it leads us to a crucial part of our uh, deep dive the mystery of the owl bear's origin. We've touched on the two leading theories, the magical experiment gone wrong and their potential connection to the Feywild. But is there any evidence to support these claims? Let's delve into the evidence, or lack thereof, shall we? The magical experiment theory, it's certainly compelling, but it relies heavily on speculation, anecdotal accounts. There's no concrete evidence, no ancient scrolls or uh, inscriptions detailing the creation of these creatures. So it's more of a campfire story than a historical fact. Precisely. But the Feywild theory, this offers a more uh, intriguing possibility. Yeah. Ancient elven lore speaks of owl bears existing in the Feywild long before they appeared in our world. This suggests they might not be a uh, creation of magic, but rather a natural, albeit unusual, part of that realm's ecosystem. So they're not an experiment, but rather immigrants from a magical realm. That's the theory. And it's, you know, bolstered by the fact that owl bears exhibit traits that are more aligned with the Feywild's uh, chaotic and unpredictable nature, their bizarre biology, their affinity for magic, and their seemingly innate aggression all point to a connection with this realm of uh, untamed magic. It's fascinating to think that these creatures might be a glimpse into a world where the laws of nature are more fluid, more magical. But if they originated in the Feywild, how did they cross over into our world? That remains a mystery. Of course. But there are uh, 
theories, of course. Some believe portals might have opened between the realms, allowing owl bears to, you know, wander through. Others speculate that powerful magic, perhaps a ritual gone awry, might have inadvertently pulled them into our world. It's like a doorway into this fantastical world swung open. Right. And these uh, incredible creatures just step through. Exactly. And it makes you wonder what other secrets the Feywild holds. What other strange and wonderful creatures might be uh, waiting to make their entrance into our world. It's enough to make you want to pack your bags and set off on an adventure. Right. Absolutely. But before we get carried away with, you know, dreams of the Feywild, let's bring our focus back to the owlbear. Yeah. We've explored their physical attributes, their behavior, their place in history, and their uh, potential origins. But there's one final question that lingers. What would it be like to encounter an owlbear in the wild? Yeah. What would your first move be? That's a question for our listeners to ponder. We've really journeyed deep into the world of owlbears, haven't we? We have. From their anatomy and that, you know, ferocious behavior to the just mind-boggling variety of subspecies and uh, those mysterious origins. It's been quite an adventure. It has. We've discussed their impact on history, the uh, the ethics of training them, and even their potential connection to that uh, magical realm of the Feywild. We've uncovered some fascinating insights. We have into their hunting strategies, their unique adaptations, and uh, the, the role they play in the, you know, delicate balance of nature. Yeah, absolutely. And we've also learned about those who dare to tame these creatures, the uh, the so-called owl bear whisperers. Right, right. It's a testament to the power of understanding and connection. Yeah. Even when you're dealing with creatures as, uh, as fierce as the owl bear. It really makes you wonder, though, what other secrets these creatures hold. What other mysteries remain to be uh, uncovered. Exactly. It's like we've only just scratched the surface of their world. But before we conclude this deep dive, I have to ask you, what stands out most to you about owl bears? It's that uh, that fascinating paradox they embody, you know, that blend of mammal and bird, brute force and uh, a surprising intelligence. I see that. It's a reminder that nature is full of surprises, you know. Yeah. It's constantly challenging our, our understanding of what's possible. That's a great point. They, they really do defy categorization existing in this space between worlds, between like the familiar and the fantastical, is what makes them so captivating. And it's not just their biology, it's their presence in, you know, history and folklore, how yeah. they've been feared and hunted, exploited, and even worshipped. You're right. They've left their mark on the world in ways we're only uh, beginning to understand. Yeah. And it all circles back to that central mystery, their origin. Right. Whether they're the result of a magical experiment gone wrong, refugees from the Feywild, or something else entirely, their existence challenges us to, you know, expand our perception of reality. It is a humbling thought, isn't it? It is. To realize that there are still mysteries out there, creatures that uh, defy explanation and remind us that we don't have all the answers. We don't. It does. And it brings us to our uh, final thought for you, our listeners. Yes. Imagine you find yourself face-to-face -face with an owl bear in the wild. Oh, wow. What would your first move be? Would you stand your ground? Make a hasty retreat. Or perhaps uh, try to communicate Ooh. to uh, bridge the gap between our worlds. The choice is yours. But whatever path you choose, remember the lessons we've learned from the owl bear. Respect the power of nature, embrace the unknown, and never underestimate the importance of understanding. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep that sense of wonder alive.